people and welcome back. This is Sherry with Full Armor of God and today I have a message for you from the Lord that has three scriptures to go along with it. The first is John chapter 10 verses 11 through 18 in the King James Version Bible. It reads, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again? No man take it from, taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. The second scripture is John chapter 14, verse 6. In the King James Version Bible, it reads, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The third scripture is Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. In the King James Version Bible, it reads, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now for the message received on February 5th, 2022. They are in it to win it, these evil dictators coming onto the scene. They don't like it when things are serene, for they are mean and need to conquer so as to feel superior. In actuality, deep within themselves is a scared little boy who was picked on as a child or domineered by a parent. With a low self-esteem and a strict upbringing, they need to lash out before anyone puts them in their place. As world leaders, they are continuously in need of praise and self-aggrandizement. An empty worthlessness is pervasive, and so they will keep grabbing at power. The powerless as children overcompensate on the world stage. They don't even know how to control their emotions. From apathy to rage, there is their happy medium, for they are only kept at bay as long as they get their way. It is sad when you see it from my point of view, for I see all of you. When I see one of my children, I look at the entire lifetime of childhood to adulthood. I see all of their faults as well as all of their strengths. Character flaws are merely weak areas which begin as a product of poor parent-slash-child interaction. I see the whole picture. Once they progress into the age of accountability, they do have a choice. One to realize something is off and maybe I should talk to someone, a professional, 
about these childhood mishaps. But time passes by, relationships crumble, and these behaviors continue the cycle of abnormality, sometimes so severely into delusional grandeur, knowing they were meant for greatness at the expense of those whom they rule over. It's not the way of righteousness, nor does it coincide with the laws of God. It's power and money and greed and anything to supersede the feeling of inadequacy they have inside, eating away at their pride, exclamation point. Plain and simple, it's an illness left untreated. No one interceded or even took the time to address now it will manifest it has festered inside for so long it must be brought forth to lessen the pain of insecurity or sometimes of never truly being loved as children very sad actually but now it seems too late to placate or stimulate the dead emotionless pain within their psyche they will do what they will for no one can stop them unless or until they are called out on it. They need to face the truth and let out these demons from within who have controlled their every whim, but instead they will inflict pain on others until they win whatever chess piece they're after on the chessboard of life. They still come to me and I would show them or they could still come to me and I would show them the way for I forgive all sin even the unthinkable iniquities exclamation point their transgressions could be forgiven and healed over and treated but the, then they would have to give up control and confess their weaknesses and usually these sociopaths will not be willing to accept defeat, exclamation point. I will forgive all who are of a contrite heart. I will heal all who ask me to heal their wounds. I am the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I died on a cross at Calvary for forgiveness of sins committed. My blood sacrifice is sufficient to heal the wounds of all of God's children. Sometimes, however, the enemy will take his opportunity and steal, kill, and destroy the spirit before I have a chance to show them the way, the truth, and the life. You have to admit there is a problem before you will be able to heal from it! Exclamation point. This is the first step to true redemption from sins! Exclamation point. Evil is utterly everywhere. The devil's temptations usually win at first until the sinner reaches the end of his rope or rock bottom, whichever comes first. Then there is nowhere else to look but up to me, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, did you hear I'm coming back to set you free and take you away from all of this tyranny? Exclamation point. Believe on me now before it's too late, for you cannot afford to wait another minute. This corrupt world is ending and you will have a choice to make. If you wait too long, it will be made for you. I am your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am coming to take my bride up with me to the kingdom of heaven to meet their true father. He loves you all so dearly. He does not want any of his children to perish in the lake of fire. We are getting down to the wire now, my beloveds. Repent and ask for forgiveness. I am the good shepherd and I do not want any of my sheep to go astray. I leave the many to seek after the one lost sheep. Are you lost? Do you feel unloved? Do you feel abandoned or alone? I will find you, love you, 
and bring you home with me, but you have to confess you are a sinner and turn away from those sins. Read my word, my beloveds. Do it now, for time is so very short. Love me wholeheartedly, for I have never stopped loving you. I will heal you but you must first come to me on bended knee. I will forgive thee, exclamation point. Do it now. I am coming, and you will not have time to repent once I arrive on earth. Get ready now, for I do not want to leave any of my sheep behind on this evil planet. Come back to me, my beloveds, and I will take you up with me to live in paradise forevermore. Only peace, love, joy, and happiness resides with me and the Father. I cannot wait to see you again, exclamation point, with undying love, Jesus, your Savior. So, this message is a little bit different from all the others. He is telling you how these dictators got to be the people that they are, and he's speaking about them having childhoods that were less than stellar, should I say, and that this is like they're overcompensating to make up for their childhoods. And he says that they need, they don't like it when things are serene for they are mean and need to conquer so as to feel superior because in actuality within them is a scared little boy who was picked on as a child or domineered by a parent. And it's just saying how that they have low self-esteem because of their upbringing was strict and they were domineered by a parent and so they're always looking to make themselves feel better as people because deep down inside they feel worthless and they have no way of controlling their emotions so they go from apathy to rage which means from not having any type of a feeling that normal people do, but then if they get mad, it just goes, you know, real f high up from zero to 100 real quickly. They're very hot-tempered. And it says, in Jesus' point of view, it's sad when you see it from my point of view, that he sees all of us. He sees us our entire lives from childhood to adulthood and that if the person that he's he's actually analyzing the psyche of the tyrannical dictator and he says if they would just admit their character flaws that they're weak that maybe they could have gone and gotten professional help and it wouldn't have gone this far, but instead, time goes on and their relationships crumble, and then their behaviors continue this cycle, and it gets worse and worse. It says sometimes so severely into delusional grandeur. And he's saying pretty much that everyone has the cross to bear, and... You know, there's always something that you can improve on in your life, and you can always ask him to help you heal. It says here that if, when you think about these dictators, it's plain and simple. It's an illness left untreated. So he's saying that that's how this personality, this abnormal personality develops, and when it's in the form of someone who has power, it's all that much more dangerous. And 
it says here they will inflict pain on others until they win whatever chess piece they're after on the chessboard of life. And he also refers to them as sociopaths. It says here, they still could come to me and I would show them the way for I forgive all sin, even the unthinkable iniquities. And their transgressions could be forgiven and healed over and treated, but then they would have to give up control and conf confess their weaknesses. And then he goes on to explain, he transfers all that into saying that he will, Jesus will forgive all who are of a contrite heart and heal all who ask me to heal their wounds. And then he tells them that sometimes the enemy gets there before he does and things just kind of spiral out of control until the person hits rock bottom and all he can do is ask for Jesus to help and then he will. But in the case of these tyrannical dictators, this has really never happened in their lives. And he's asking everyone to repent and ask for forgiveness. And he says that the Heavenly Father loves you all so very dearly. He does not want any of his children to perish in a lake of fire. And he's telling the time in which the times in which we are living, we are living in the final days. He said, read my word, do it now, for time is so very short. And that he wants you, Jesus wants you to love him wholeheartedly, for he never stopped loving you, and he will heal you, but you have to first come back to him on bended knee, do it now, get ready, because he doesn't want to leave any of his sheep behind on this evil planet but you have to make a choice and you have to to get ready because if you're not ready you're not going to be able be able to go up with him when he comes back which is very very soon he wants you to get on bended knee get into the word if you're lost uh, repent of sin if you don't know who he is read the, the bible get the, all get a bible and read it from cover to cover especially read the books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, get to know who he is when he was here the first time. And he will be coming back, and that you can live with him in paradise, him and the Father forevermore, where only peace, love, joy, and happiness resides. And that he cannot wait to see you again, but you have to get ready. So this is the message for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and definitely share it to all of your social media platforms. If you feel that this message is speaking to you in any way, please leave a comment down below in the comment section. If you have any questions and or specific prayer requests, please send them to my email address, which is also listed down below in the description box. And all I can say is time is running out and that I don't know what's going to happen. I heard yesterday that Putin is thinking, I mean, I think actually he started the process for deploying nuclear weapons. I don't know exactly if, you know, how that works in their country, but he's not taking anything off the table and he is considering using the weapons in his nuclear arsenal. So any minute, any day, it could be your last breath. And if you do not repent and believe on Jesus wholeheartedly, you're not going to go up in the rapture when he does come to get his bride. So this is the message for today. Please heed it. And please come back to the Lord your God and keep looking up. And may God bless you.